I'm Teria Shantall, and we are continuing our exposition of the prime principles of logotherapy, which, as you may have already discovered in our discussions, are really the, the very principles of a meaningful uh, human existence, principles we all need to embrace and live by. Now, in discussing how we can fulfill the meaning of our lives, there's only one way, no other way, and it's the way of choice. As it is said in the Tanakh, or uh, in the Hebrew Bible, choose this day whom you shall serve, life and blessing or death and cursing. The choice is up to you. I remember coming to Frankel for the first time and his very first lecture, which was at the United States International University in America. And he said, imagine that one day you can go to your own gravestone. What will be written on it? Will it be, here lies so-and-so. Oh, what a pity. You know, it's so sad. This person has never really lived. They've been eaten up by worries, anxieties, fears, and problems, and they never fully emerged from it with courage or with dignity. Such a sadness. Such a waste. Or, he said, much rather that than a next kind of grave where on the gravestone it would be written, here lies so-and-so, oh my word. What this person did in terms of hurting others, of having destructive effects with his ugly actions and attitudes, may he never live again. Well, did that bring home to all of us listening to Frankel that we bring judgment upon our own heads? That's it. We are all given the potential, but what do we do with it? He said, may you come to a third gravestone that says, Echo Homo. Behold the man. Behold this woman. What a life. What they did in order to change the world for the better. The memories they left, the influence that they exerted upon other lives. We cannot even measure in terms of how it will go on and on and on through the generations. He said, may that be your gravestone. And he said, this is the challenge. And actually, when we've been talking like this, we realize that the whole thrust of our discussion really is what is said in the Bible. Adam, where are you? Come out of hiding. Come out of your fears and worries. But now, how do we actually then become what we are supposed to be? Like... God said to an Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. Perfect? Yes, we are on the road to moral perfection, to what we are actually called upon to be, to be crowned, like it says in Psalm 8, with honor and glory. Well, and what is this way? Now, a student wrote this, and I thought this summarized it completely. She said, there is certainly no destination other than being fully present in the moment. But without the future to hold on to, we will have little reason to go on. And here she says it all. There's a challenge. There's a call upon our lives. Frankl said, answerableness is the very, also the very essence of human existence. We must lead an answerable life, an accountable life. A call is made upon us. In other words, there's a future. That, and, and man, like many psychologists, the humanists have already discovered, is a future-directed kind of person. We're always reaching out. The moment we feel there's no hope, like one survivor said to me, this is what you must learn. 
um, and all of you must realize, never give up, not in good, not in bad, because once you give up hope, once you give up your future orientatedness and then reaching out to something more and ever beyond yourself, you've had it, you've had it. Then, then life becomes totally meaningless, what Frankel calls the existential vacuum. What is it all for? I can't find any reason or purpose to my life. But to come into the meaning of the moment, what does that mean? It really means this full emergence of saying, here I am at this moment being confronted with this particular concrete situation that calls upon me to make a choice, even if it's a choice of attitude. And here we come, what he said, that every single event that you handle in the right way, that every question that is being asked of you and that you answer directly and in the right way, and as he said, every situation have only one answer, the right one, the right one, the right one. If you answer it, if you are in the moment in the right way, in other words, if it's a moment to be receptive, to be learning something, to be understanding something, to be available, a, 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 a moment to take a stand, to, to, to stand up what is wrong, to refuse to go along with, or whatever, or you, you make use of this opportunity, um, and this one thing that is being called upon you to do now, you do now and you don't postpone or try to escape from. He said that moment is eternalized. It's written in your book of life. And now just think about what he said here. He said, we are only fully ourselves on the very last day of our lives. Because then we take with us all the choices we have made. But wow, wait a moment. You don't want to die with a sense of regret and then great fear because what? You know, your life has not rendered an account of which you are proud of. In fact, you're ashamed. In fact, you're frightened for the verdict. And because this is what we take with us, who we are what we have become, what we've done with our lives, how it has transformed us into what we were supposed to have in the first instance, full human stature, stature of dignity, of honor, of integrity, of a life well lived. Like one survivor said to me, I did whatever I had to do. I have a good conscience. I like myself. Oh, wow, this is the greatest homecoming, to come home into yourself and to like yourself, to feel at home with yourself, to feel comfortable. And this, like I say, is the only way to reach that full human stature is to be in the moment. And that is like Frankl said. He says, whatever we've done in this way is not irrecoverably lost into the past, it's irrevocably stored. It's there. It's done. It's part of who you are. Who can take that away from you? Nothing and no one. It's yours forever because that's what you have become through your choices. And therefore, he said, you can lead a life either of a monument or of woe, or, you know, something that, that never got to be shaped into anything admirable. Um, and But the choice is yours. But there is always this wonderful outcome that he says, the only way we can change the past is to repent of and to have um, a, a, what he called an uh, existential, existential turnabout, a change. Um, if the past of taught you to be correct now in your behavior, you nullify what has happened in the past. You, you, you actually erase it out of the book of your life in, through an act of repentance and restitution and change. So the option to become who you are supposed to be always remains open the last day of your life, even if a last day of your life is to retrofit 
reflectively repent of all that you've done to come to a final realization, I did wrong. Even that confession is a dignified confession.